Hello, lovely people. Yeah, I know. So let's talk about this. So I've been quiet for almost two weeks now because the all the amplifier testing videos that I did, I did everything in one go and I published it like on a week. And basically I was working, <laughs> working on this. So what is this? Um, this above is installed. That's the one audio, 18 inch. And I did exactly as I planned. I took the main manifold, I chopped it off and just I put a plywood board on top. Uh, it's an 18 mil plywood it has like expanding glue some foam and everything i know it's airtight it's totally fine i have bolts and everything so it's rock solid it's not moving anywhere it moves together with a car and yeah so all of this i did this because i want to reuse a hundred percent of all the wiring that i had because before i figure out all how everything goes I didn't want to cut or make any new wires. So all of these wires are from the previous install, exactly the same. That's why everything is a total, total mess, but now it works. The system is fully tuned, kinda. I did a quick tune, like an hour, an hour and a half, but everything is working. Rear sub is working, front sub is working. Everything is on, everything is no problems at all. Now you see here, two of these amplifiers and this one. So this is, a Teramps and it is a 3k amplifier uh, for the subwoofer now the question is why I will do a full review of this amplifier I'm gonna show you all the measurements that I did the THD and everything but the main thing is um, the Alpine that I had it did like 900 watts 990 uh, max however this can take more and the thing is the alpine that does 900 watts at like rising thd so it's like one percent and it goes up i want headroom in my system i want a lot of headroom this one does 3k and the thing is like if you have an amplifier that can do much more than you need it's not a problem at all it's exactly the same with these that feeds the mids and tweets i have what 75 watts for mids and tweets and it's overkill However, it's totally fine. Everybody has more power than they actually need. And this one, with 3 kilowatts of available power, I tone it down to match it, like, to have around, like, probably close to 1,000 watts for this one max. And it doesn't struggle at all. And we will see, because the THD is kind of surprising on this one. Oh, so, by the way, all the videos that I did about the amplifier measurements, uh, they didn't perform, like, at all. Nobody was, was watching them. And it's not surprising, because you came here for for tuning, not for this. So, what I did, I, with a few other guys, I created a Facebook group. It's going to call Distortion Factory. And in that Facebook group, we will publish the pictures of measurements of everything that we're going to measure so i did measure all of these amplifiers i put them there i'm going to put the dsp measurements as well so it's going to be a new group i'm not sure when we're going to launch it but yeah keep your eyes open for distortion factory now with all of this install i was figuring and thinking because i cannot afford a lot of time for the install itself i have one hour there two hours there that kind of stuff so i cannot do a full install with all the beauty pals and everything so my main idea is to make the system functional and working and later maybe i don't know when whatever next year whatever then i can work with all the beauty pals and actual install i'm waiting for some fuse blocks to arrive because i need new fuse blocks i yeah it's gonna be different now with these two uh, I didn't install them yet. I will because I need a kind of mounting bracket for the lithium. I, I figured like which side to use and I'm going to use this side because this is the closest to the power side. And this is the DCDT charger that I recently bought. Uh, I got it as an Amazon warehouse deal. It was a brand new, but it's like damaged packaging or whatever. So it was cheaper. And these, uh, Renogy, is the brand that's available in the UK. So you have Renogy and you have Victor Knox or whatever it's called. And the Victor Knox is like Apple of these DC chargers and Renogy is like Android. So it's a cheaper version. It's not as fancy. And when it comes brand new, these sides are blue. 
So I took it apart and I painted black just to match it and it looked good. So this DC DC charge is a 40 amp DC DC charger and it's amazing because it reacts to the alternator. It doesn't drain the battery. So it has which side this side it has these two pins and one of them that's why it's not installed because I need to run a wire from the alternator, not from the battery, but from the alternator through the firewall into the car and in here so it would trigger the DC DC charger to charge because it will charge only when the alternator is running so it's not going to discharge my main battery in the front and when I'm going to run that wire then I can run this and this maybe I'm going to put it on the switch for now just to have the lithium installed but yeah so this is in the plans and as I mentioned uh, I tuned it the tune is done if you the thing is like i'm not sure if i should do the actual tune like on youtube because i did many many tunes if you're interested uh pop a comment below i might do a video about the actual tuning the alpine status three-way plus that plus this because it's very interesting to see how this performs so if you're interested in the actual tuning video comment below i might make one but for now i just wanted to show you what's happening here so yeah basically this is what's happening in the car now i want to show you something else but for this we need to go inside so i want to show you these couple of uh boxes uh let's start with this one this was sent to me by frank it's a recoil amplifier so it's a four channel and again i did measurements on it um, i will publish it the thing is you have like amp dynos of this uh amplifier online people have done it but look how small it is it's tiny, tiny compared to this. I just opened it up just to see the inside. There's not much inside and it's so surprising. So this amplifier, um, again, I might do a video about this or I'm just going to post uh, the distortion graphs in the group. This amplifier costs like $150 or something like that. And it does uh, clean power. I didn't measure it. About like 100 30 watts into 4 ohms and 170 or 180 into 2 ohms bridged 360 per channel and it's kind of cleanish so it's very very surprising like you can get cheap stuff that performs quite good so again if you're interested in a full review of this amplifier put a comment below I might do it because why not uh, yeah, you, you can find M dinos of this, but uh, nobody's gonna tell you how it actually performs THD wise. So this is one thing, and the other thing is this, all of this. So these two boxes. Since I started tuning, and like everybody does, everybody starts with a single microphone, and then they kind of upgrade to stuff. So this is going to be uh, my mic array. So this what we have here is a audio interface, same like we use the Scarlett for uh, a single microphone where I have tutorial with home impulse response and everything that you use one microphone and uh, loop back. However, this one is an Octa capture. So Octa is eight and it has eight input channels, four on this side, four on that side, and basically can take up to eight microphones. And micro rays, uh, use five or seven microphones and a loop back. So this is the interface and this is the other one that I received very recently, like yesterday only. And here we have six of Behringer ECM 8000s, which are the cheap, probably the cheapest XLR microphones, but they're not calibrated. But they're fine for the price. So this is 30 pounds for a single mic, which is super, super mega cheap. So I have six of those. I have this snake cable that has, it's, I think it's supposed to be three meters long, that has eight connections. So basically seven for seven microphones and one is going to be a spare one because I just didn't want to make it because it's it basically for this cable, it's cheaper to buy the cable then actually make it yourself. I don't know why. And now I have six of these and I have one, this, this is the older one that I have. This is my, come on, focus. Nadi, Nadi 
CM100. So Adam was very nice to calibrate it for me with this uh, very, very fancy microphone. So I have that kind of calibration file. So it is kind of calibrated properly. And I will be making separate calibration files for each individual microphone against this one. So this is going to be my reference one. That's why I bought only six. This is going to be in the very center, the reference one. And it's going to be for... Uh, time alignment for phase measurements and all of those are going to be just for averaging the RTA response so six on the sides one in the middle seven and again seven inputs and one for uh, the loop back so yeah I'm gonna go into micro race I always wanted it and like when I posted a picture of this people were like oh what do you need it is it better is it whatever it's like for me personally, I just want to experiment. I just want to play around. And this is the whole channel. It's That's what it's about. Just playing around, checking stuff and showing it to you. So I will be making videos how to connect everything, uh, how to set up, how to take measurements and how to actually tune. Now, the main thing is like I have all the hardware. I don't have any software. So software wise, uh, there are a few options. Everybody's using smart and I'm not going to use smart because uh, first of all, it's expensive. It's not really obtainable for other normal people because like a thousand pounds or whatever, or like a subscription, like almost 160 pounds per year, which is. Meh. So my plan is to use open sound meter. I might do a tutorial about that because that can take live phase measurements kind of same as smart and it can, it supports multiple inputs as well and i'm planning to buy a rew pro license which allows me to take rta with multiple microphones with a micro ray because rew is free and the pro license is like a hundred dollars, which is really, really obtainable. So actually, let's talk about uh, micro rays and the cost of a micro ray. So if you know the most popular micro ray in the world, probably is the JL Max, and JL Max costs about what three and a half grand, something like that. Now, the same micro ray with Smart. It's cheaper, but it's still expensive just because of the smart. Smart is super, super expensive. Now, this micro ray, the problem with the microphones, you cannot get the microphone secondhand because that's why I had to buy them new. And even new, like 30 pounds per microphone, it's not that expensive. These cards, you can find them secondhand. So I bought this card, uh, sound card interface for 200 pounds on eBay. It's working. It's fine. You can buy a Behringer, which might be a little bit cheaper, or you can buy a Scarlet uh, that's going to be more expensive. I think second hand, like 300, 350. So I paid 200 pounds for this one. The microphones, 30 pounds each, plus a cable, and like 20 or 30. 200 pounds for all the mics and everything. And for REW license, it's going to be 100 pounds, 100 dollars. So the whole micro ray uh, is going to cost me personally about 500 pounds. And I cannot stress this enough. Thank you for my supporters on Patreon and directly via PayPal. If you want to support me, you can do that. You don't have to, but you can. But when people support me, I can afford to buy this stuff because I couldn't afford to buy everything by myself. So thank you very much, everyone for supporting me. And now it's gonna be very, very fun to experiment with all of that. I will be tuning my car. Uh, I will be comparing single mic versus micro ray and that kind of stuff that everybody is very interested in. But first I need to figure out how everything works because it is a kind of steep learning curve as well, but it's gonna be very, very, very fun. So I think that's it for today. Quick update. Uh, this amplifier, Taramps 3K amplifier, New upcoming mic array, uh, maybe new tuning session, we will see. And yeah, thank you very much for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next one.